Let's talk about browsers and servers. This video will teach you about their purpose and how they contribute to the giant network that we know as the internet. What happens when you request a website in your browser? Well, every time you type a web address and press enter, a series of things happen in the few seconds it takes for the website to appear on your screen. Over recent decades, there have been many web browsers. Some of the most popular today are Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, and Opera. All of these browsers serve the same basic purpose to display websites for you to read and interact with. But just how do they do this? First, the browser takes the web address you provided and sends a request to a server across the internet for the files that make up the website. The contacted server is dedicated to holding the website's files. It may even be thousands of miles away from you and your device. Once the server receives the request, it contains the logic for processing the request and identifying the files and data that the client has specified. It responds to the browser's request with the necessary files. This is the process that allows the browser to display website files to you, and it happens in the few seconds it takes for websites to load on your device screen. You may be asking yourself, what is a server? A server is a specialized computer connected to a network. The role of this computer is to listen for requests from network devices and send back data. Servers provide or serve up resources like website files, data, and assets like images or videos, along with other cool things. Servers are not like the computers you may be used to. They are focused on data storage and retrieval, so they have no monitors or keyboards. A server will need lots of computing power to serve up websites that reach thousands or even millions of users. Next, we need to understand how the browsers and servers understand each other. The internet follows protocols or rules that govern the format of data sent over the internet or other networks. Browsers and servers communicate with one another using the internet protocol known as HTTP. You've seen this before. HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol allows for data transfer. When you see the S at the end of HTTP, the data is being transferred securely. An important part of the hypertext transfer protocol is that each request has a request method that specifies the type of request being made. For example, if the user is just asking to fetch a resource, this is specified as a GET request. If a user is sending data to the server, for example, such as submitting information via a form, this is specified as a POST request. When the server sends back a response, it sends a status code that accompanies the requested resource. You might be familiar with seeing 404 error messages when browsing the internet. This is an HTTP response code that indicates that the requested content wasn't found. HTTP provides reliable structure to the interplay between the client and the server. Let's review what we learned today. There are three important things to remember. One, the browser sends requests to the server and displays or renders website files. Two, the server stores website files and sends them to the web browser upon request. Three, HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is a standardized set of rules for how browsers and servers transfer data to one another.